good afternoon everybody. It's wonderful to be here in this glorious building of Rochester Cathedral for the 2022 Kent and Medway Apprentice Graduation Ceremony. Now today we're going to be celebrating apprentices from level two right through to levels five, six and seven degree apprenticeships. Now today is about the apprenticeship, so we'll not be announcing specific qualifications achieved today, rather the apprenticeship achieved, which is a qualification we'll be a part of, including degrees where applicable. We're conscious, of course, that degrees are notably conferred by the higher education institutions for each apprentice at separate ceremonies as well. Whilst for other apprentices, their qualifications are confirmed by their awarding organisations as applicable. Now, 2022 sees some records for this ceremony. We have almost double the number of apprentices on 2019, which is absolutely fantastic. We've also engaged 25 training providers and more than 80 employers from multiple industry sectors. So it is one massive celebration on so many levels and great to be a part of it and face to face again. And it is now my great pleasure to introduce our first key speaker of the ceremony, Rochester's MP and Minister for Schools and Children in the Department for Education, Kelly Tolhurst MP. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, like Nicola, uh, it's a real pleasure to be back here I was here in 2019 uh, for the first um, apprenticeship graduation and it's, I'm really pleased that we're back to normal and uh, uh, we're all being able to celebrate the wonderful achievements of our apprentices today. Um, it's wonderful not just because I am uh, the Member of Parliament for this uh, amazing constituency of Rochester and Strew but um, as Nicola highlighted I'm currently the Minister of State for Schools and Childhood and so um, obviously this is an event today that has not just uh, important to me as a local constituent CMP but it's also important um, as me being part of the government. But one of the things that um, and why particularly I'm pleased to be and I love to support this event is that my background was I left school at 16 and went into work and did my qualifications whilst I was working for three years. It wasn't an apprenticeship in those days but basically it gave me the opportunity to thrive in the workplace, be able to get promoted and whether some of you may not agree, but you know, end up being a minister in, in, in government. So I don't think I've done too badly, um, but it is therefore, um, it doesn't surprise you that I have been a strong believer in apprenticeships and the vocational qualifications. And while I know you would have all gone through ups and downs, over the past years, I hope that you will look back on your experiences as positive ones and share my belief that it would be a great way, it's a great way into a skilled profession and comes with many benefits. As an apprentice, you are earning while you are learning. That means no tuition fees to pay back and apprentices often go on to earn more, more than those who go through university depending on the chosen industry. There are things that you learn through on-the-job training that you simply just do not learn in the classroom. The hands-on practical experience is invaluable, but also the skills, relationships and attitudes you get to develop will set you up for life, whichever your chosen path. Apprentices are, well, apprenticeships and apprentices are vital in order to give career pathways for all including industry and the economy more widely. We must continue to grow a skilled economy and a productive economy and ensure that local businesses have the skilled workforce they need for the future and that is what apprenticeships provide. The government has focused heavily on making apprenticeships work better, be more valuable for the apprentices and for businesses. And in recent years, apprenticeships have undergone a major uh, series of reforms to bolster the quality, making them meaningful and in demand as a pathway into work and as a part of the educational mix for employers to grow their workforce and recruit talent. Since I stood here in 2019, the government has made standards more rigorous and put more funding into apprenticeships. This is only right as every one pound 
that the government spends on apprenticeships actually generates between six to a ten pound return. It's vital to ensure that apprenticeship schemes work for employers too and I hope that the providers here today have found taking on apprentices and a rewarding experience. For example, I know that the government is continuing to assure that employers can access more flexible training models that suit their needs and, the, and that, that we have halved the co-investment that, that is made by most employers. Finally, I know that a number of you here have done your apprenticeship under the NHS and I just want to say thank you for your hard work during what has been a very difficult time for our health services over the last couple of years. The most important thing that we need to focus on is healthcare and ensuring we are getting a new generation of healthcare professionals into our local health services and building our workforce. We all rely on you guys to look after us and our families and often when we are most in need. I hope that many of you will stay in Kent and Medway for years to come to make sure that we uh, are one of the best places in the country for healthcare. But with that said, I do want to congratulate every one of you um, who is here today for your hard work and the achievements through your journey. I hope you are all excited about your future pathways and the opportunities that lay ahead for you within your chosen industries. And I wish you all the very best for the future and look forward to meeting many of you on the stage today. So finally, congratulations and thank you for listening. Sorting out my mic issues. Thank you so much. Thanks for your continued support, and we're going to invite you back onto the stage oh, in a little yeah. while. Yes, thank you. I'm going to hold it. Yeah. Right. Is that that's better, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> Should have just done it like a pop star all along. Right. I would now like to welcome our next speaker to the stage. His contribution to raising the profile of apprentices and apprenticeships is perhaps unrivaled. So much so that she's been awarded a CBE for exactly that. So please give a very warm, warm welcome to Dr. Anna Morrison, CBE of Amazing Apprenticeships. Absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna try the pop star thing as well. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here. And this is my first time visiting Rochester and the Cathedral. So um, unlike Kelly and Nicola, I haven't been here before, but I'm really delighted that you've invited me along to say a few words. Um, as you've heard, my name is Anna Morrison, and I'm the founder of an organization called Amazing Apprenticeships. And we champion raising awareness about apprenticeships in around four and a half thousand schools and colleges across England. It's a huge passion of mine and my fantastic team that we get really good information into schools so that we can inspire the next generation of apprentices, but also that we can work with teachers and educators, parents and carers and wider communities to really understand that apprenticeships are a fantastic and credible option for individuals to pursue. So today I'd like to just talk to you for a few minutes about the importance of paying it forward. Now this is a phrase that many of you will have heard, I'm sure, um, and it's when you are particularly grateful for something, that rather than thinking about um, how you might pay it back or you know, thank the person who's given you those opportunities, you can take that moment and think about how you could pay it forward instead. And the purpose of paying it forward is really about your inspirational stories. Now I meet many apprentices up and down the country who say, well, my story isn't that interesting. I just did an apprenticeship or I've just been doing my job. You know, why would anyone want to hear my story? But the point is that you will be the inspiration for those next generation of apprentices. Um, I'm sure many of you can think back to perhaps when you were in school and the way that careers information may have been given out and you may not have been fortunate enough to have heard about apprenticeships when you were in education. What we want to try and do is ensure that all apprentices get the opportunity to inspire others with their stories. So my big plea for you today is to really think about how you might pay it forward. It could be something quite formal. It could be that you take part in a case study or you perhaps go into a local school or college and give a talk. It could be something less formal. So it could be about 
thinking about who in your friends and family network might be looking for that piece of inspiration? Have you got um, a niece or nephew or a neighbour who might be really desperate to hear about apprenticeships and understand your journey so that you can inspire them? So really, that's what I'd like to leave you with today. Through Amazing Apprenticeships, we are connected in so many ways. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to get involved, then um, we would love to help you to share your fantastic stories and to make that kind of commitment today so that one day in the future, you might inspire another apprentice who would get to sit in glorious surroundings like this and enjoy the same celebrations that you're getting to enjoy. Um, and I just need to say here as well, there's a formal way through the Ambassador Network, um, which is organized by the Department for Education. You can sign up to be an ambassador as well. So thank you so much, and I'm really looking forward to the celebrations today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. I'm going to have to grab that program back off of you, or <laughs> we're going to run into huge difficulties. <laughs> thank you so much for your contribution today and your inspiring words. Now, it, we have got to the time that everyone has been waiting for. The first set of graduates are about to be announced. So, Kelly Tolhurst, could you please join us back on stage, please, to hand out the scrolls? Now, we're going to announce each graduate in turn, and as I do so, they will come up onto the stage here, receive their scroll from Kelly, and then, as Mark mentioned earlier, they will walk the entire length of the nave so they can be acknowledged by friends and family and other guests that are here this afternoon. Now, there are a lot of people graduating today. I would suggest that you don't clap every single one. They, they won't be at all offended. At the end of each set of graduates, I will tell you when we've reached the end, and then you can give them a huge round of applause. Otherwise, you're going to have achy hands by the end of the afternoon. Um, as we mentioned, of course, you are free to take plenty of photographs this afternoon. We also have our official photographer who sat just to my right-hand side, uh, to the left, if you're looking towards the stage. He's going to be taking some photos. So. Uh, those who are graduating, when you come up onto the stage, do make sure that you pause, take a look at our, our photographer and have your picture taken when you reach the stage with you, Kelly. All right? Excellent. So we will begin. And our first training provider is ABM Training UK Limited. And our first graduate this afternoon is Maria Chittock, leader in adult care, level five. Lisa Davis, Lead Adult Care Worker, Level 3. Danny Hopper, Lead Adult Care Worker, Level 3. Jason Joyce, Lead Adult Care Worker, Level 3. Dave Newton, Lead Adult Care Worker, Level 3. Anita Daniel, Adult Care Worker, Level 2. Julie Gamester, Adult Care Worker, Level 2. Emily McMullen, Adult Care Worker, Level 2. <laughs> the standard has been set for how you walk down the nave. We are now moving on to Canterbury Christchurch University, Geraldine Burden, Business Management, Level 6. Lisa Marriott, Management Professional Practice, Level 6. Next, we move to EKC Group. Marcella Cullen, Operations Management, Level 5. Joanna Brown, Leadership and Management Operations Manager, Level 5.
Nicola Kelly, Operations Management, Level 5. Rachel Ball, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. Edward Curtis, Advanced Architectural Joinery, Level 3. Dan Ursel, Team Leader, Supervisor, Level 3. Kaylee Johnson, Early Years Education, Level 3. Leah Merry, Business Administration, Level 3. Jack Biggs, Advanced Architectural Joinery, Level 2. Our next training provider is E-Training. Velija Saskivicene, Lead Adult Care Worker, Level 3. Bianca Hodson, Adult Care Worker, Level 2. Leonis Lennon, Adult Care Worker, Level 2. Robert Jones, Business Administration, Level 3. And we've now moved on to training provider IPS International Limited. Ellis Sharp, Business Administration, Level 3. Amelia Cochran, Maintenance and Operations Engineering Technician, Level 3. Samuel Hatcher, Maintenance and Operations Engineering Technician, Level 3. <laughs> Joshua Killick, Maintenance and Operations Engineering Technician, Level 3. Carly Ryan, Maintenance and Operations Engineering Technician, Level 3. Matthew Smithers, Engineering Technical Support, Level 3. Natalie Truman, Digital Marketer, Level 3. Daniel Miller, Heavy Vehicle, Level 2. Callum Pearson, Heavy Vehicle, Level 2. That concludes our first set of graduates, so do let's give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> Kelly, thank you ever so much for being here. We do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, the eagle-eyed will have noticed that we are not following the complete order within the programme in our first set. Now, this is because there is a very distinctive feature of this graduation ceremony. It is, in fact, the high number, as has been mentioned by Kelly earlier, of NHS apprentices that we're celebrating today. Now, 45, in fact, which is absolutely fantastic and especially poignant given that we do return here for the first time in person since the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, before we join in celebrating all of them, I'd like to welcome to the stage Paul Bentley, the CEO of NHS Kent and Medway, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to turn to my NHS colleagues in just a minute, but there's just a couple of things I'd like to, to add. Um, one is it's a super opportunity, and thank you so much for inviting us. Um, I'm the chief executive of an organisation that is about 100 days old. So it's a new organisation, and the significance of that is that integrated care boards were introduced to do exactly what we're doing today, which is to integrate education, health, care, and the commercial sector. 
So this is a worked example of what we're trying to do. So thank you very much for that. Um, turning to colleagues to give you a sense of what the NHS does every day. Today, the NHS in England will help 1.6 million people. That's the size of the scale. Whether that be through phoning NHS 111 or literally having a life-saving operation and all the points in between, that's what your colleagues today, who we're gonna welcome in a minute, are doing every day of their working lives. And to Kelly's point, thank you very much to the public for your support during what has been an extraordinary period in the life of the NHS. But there's a couple of other things I'd just like to add, which is that nobody would get to this stage today without the help and support of somebody else who's helped them push them through the difficult times. And for a number of people in this room, there'll be more than one. So, going slightly off script, I'd like to thank the significant others in people's life who have been there to inspire our apprentices to push themselves that last final bit. They would not achieve what they have achieved without your support. So can you give yourselves a round of applause because it is really remarkable. But to, and I think it was a flotilla, did somebody say there was a flotilla of NHS staff? I'm not sure exactly whether that's the collective now. But in Kent and Medway, the NHS will invest this year between six and seven million pounds in apprenticeship support. And that's absolutely key and crucial because what we need is the people to deliver the health care that happens. And it's not just the nurses and the doctors and the therapists, it's the whole panoply of what people do in the NHS. So a very localized thank you to everybody who worked so very hard in the NHS. I'm incredibly proud and supremely grateful to you. Enjoy your day and enjoy every part of your next part of your career. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paul. And Paul is actually going to return to the stage to hand out the second set of scrolls to our graduates. So Paul, if you will want to make your way straight back up again, we will. <laughs> We will now celebrate all of those NHS graduates today. And we're starting with Cambridge Marketing College Limited as our first trainer. And first up onto the stage, please, is Holly Bamfield, Public Relations and Communications Assistant, Level 4. Ella Christina Collette, Nursing Associate, Level 5. Gemma King, Nursing Associate, Level 5. <laughs> Hayley Waller, Nursing Associate, Level 5. <laughs> From CSR Group Next, Alexandra Riley, Healthcare Science, Level 4. Next, from Dynamic Training UK Limited, Daniela Enchiu, Healthcare Assistant Practitioner, Level 5. Lorraine Newnham, Assistant Practitioner, Level 5. Katie Norcross, Assistant Practitioner, Level 5. Carolyn Scott, Assistant Practitioner, Level 5. Claire Sexton, Assistant Practitioner, Level 5. Next, we're moving on to Dynamic Training UK Limited. Jessica Halton, Clinical Support Worker, Level 2. Mandy Gumbrell, Healthcare Support Worker, Level 2. Sarah Johnstone, Healthcare Support Worker, Level 2. Sharon Osborne, Healthcare Support Worker, Level 2.
and our next training provider is EKC Group. Holly Greenbridge, Management and Leadership, Level 5. Amy Carter, Laboratory Technician, Level 3. Kimberly Jeffs, Laboratory Technician, Level 3. Vicky Perry, Laboratory Technician, Level 3. Martin Collins, Principles of Management and Leadership, Level 3. Sharon Williams, Principles of Management and Leadership, Level 3. Simon Duggan, Team Leader, Supervisor, Level 3. Mark Watson, Team Leader, Supervisor, Level 3. Maria Angelica Jinko, Senior Healthcare Support Worker, Adult Nursing Support, Level 3. Debbie Sue Wilson, Senior Healthcare Support Worker, Mental Health, Level 3. Our next NHS training provider is Encompass Consultancy Limited. Caroline Gibson, Operations Departmental Manager, Level 5. Rebecca Grantham, Operations Departmental Manager, Level 5. Sandra Hobden, Operations Departmental Manager, Level 5. Caroline Stapleton, Operations Departmental Manager, Level 5. Nicola Waters, Operations Departmental Manager, Level 5. And returning to Dynamic Training UK Limited, Him Kumari Adhikari Dakal, Senior Healthcare Support Worker, Level 3. From Lifetime Training, Fiona Flynn, Business Administration, Level 3. <laughs> From North Kent College, Charlotte Day, Dental Nursing, Level 3. Claire Stevens, Dental Nursing, Level 3. Open University, Emma Chambers, Senior Leader, Level 7. Cube Learning, Caroline Davies, Business and Professional Administration, Level 4. Deborah Ladlow, Business and Professional Administration, Level 4. Chelsea Powell, Business and Professional Administration, Level 4. Amanda Palmer, Business and Professional Administration within IT, Level 4. From Runway Training, Sophie Jones, Customer Service Practitioner, Level 2. Rachel Kempthorne, Customer Service Practitioner, Level 2. Victoria Knight, Customer Service Practitioner, Level 2.
I'm hoping I haven't missed anyone <laughs> and that that does <laughs> conclude set two of our graduates. We hope. Thank you very much, Paul. Now, with so many apprentices from so many employers and training providers, it's hard to decide on a single case study to hear. However, the organizers have decided that it would be great to welcome back a case study from the 2019 ceremony, not least because, as you will hear, her achievement back then has not stopped there. So please, could you welcome Victoria Lawrence of the Education People to the stage. Thank you, everybody. Um, it is really fantastic to be here today to celebrate all you amazing graduates. Um, and it is very surreal to be talking today um, as a past graduate myself. Um, and I know that it's a very long walk down there, especially when you're in heels. So you're all doing really, really well. Um, apprenticeships is something that I'm really passionate about. Um, the apprenticeship programmes have played a really important part in my career progression. Um, I started at Kent County Council as a business admin apprentice um, and really I kind of fell into that to be honest. I didn't know what I wanted to do after I left school um, but I started that apprenticeship and it really helped me to develop an understanding of the world of work in a really supportive and progressive way and I was you know given some really great opportunities and challenges to take on board so that really helped me to develop in my career and I've been able to develop into different roles within Kent County Council and currently the education people. Since then I have decided to go again um, I'm actually doing a degree apprenticeship now in project management um, and that has been challenging at times doing that while doing um, another role within the organisation but actually it's really been useful to learn things and instantly put them into practice and hopefully all of you felt that on your apprenticeship programmes as well. I really feel that you know apprenticeships not only help develop you but they're also a great way just to get out there into the world of work. For me I didn't actually think project management would be something that I would go into in the future um, but through the exposure that I was given in the workplace I was able to figure out a career that I'm really passionate about. So I'm very grateful to my apprenticeship experiences and my managers and people that I've worked with that have helped me find my path. On my next steps, I'm going to be carrying on my degree apprenticeship, um, but I'm actually going to be undertaking a new role. I'm going to work for Kent County Council, and I'm going to be working on a project to help um, increase the uptake of the Nursing Associate Apprenticeship Programme. And as someone, hopefully you can tell, who feels very passionately about apprenticeships, it's a role that I'm very, very keen to get started on and hopefully I can do it justice. I also want to say that actually one of the things I try and promote as well is that although apprenticeships are great for the apprentice, hopefully they are great for the employer as well and I definitely think they are. Um, my current employer wouldn't have me otherwise. Um, so I do think it's really worthwhile considering taking on apprentices as well as considering to do one. As a past and current apprentice, I can say with confidence that apprenticeships really can provide a valuable learning opportunity on someone's career path. And that's not just at the start, it can be, as the apprentices here today have shown, it can be throughout your career as well. I hope that all the graduates here today experience these great benefits and hope you go on to a fulfilling and successful career. Thank you everyone and congratulations to the graduates. Thank you so much, Victoria. I think that kind of um, echoes your words about paying it forward. And um, to be doing another apprenticeship makes me, always makes me feel very inadequate when you come up and tell me how much you're doing. But um, I can speak from my workplace that we've had apprentices as well, and they are absolutely fantastic. Um, I think within the first week of one of our apprentices joining, he ended up going to number 10. So <laughs> you do really get thrown into work, and it's a great place to, as we've heard before, um, earn and learn at the same time. So what a great example. Thank you so much for speaking to us this afternoon and congratulations and again, good luck in uh, your further course. Now, before, you continue, before we continue, I would like to raise special thanks to our wonderful ceremony sponsors this afternoon that have helped make all of this possible because for us to have a celebration that all apprentices can enjoy without the cost of 
gowning, etc. It's such a prestigious venue, just simply wouldn't be possible without them. So I'm going to read out a list and then we can give them a big round of applause at the end. Berry Gardens, Kent County Council, Kent Invicta Chamber of Commerce, who also sponsored our VIP business reception earlier, Grain LNG, NHS Kent and Medway, and the University of Kent. Please show your appreciation to them. We are now halfway through, ladies and gentlemen, and it's time to announce our third set of graduates. And this time I would like to kindly ask Anna Morrison, CBE, to join me back on stage, please, to hand over the scrolls. Just as before, there will be quite a, a number of graduates who are coming up onto the stage, so you can reserve your applause until the very end if you like, or if you want to keep your hands warm, I don't know, you can, you can give them a little clap as they go. So our first training provider is Kent Training and Apprenticeships. And first up onto the stage, please, at Danielle Baker, Customer Services Assistant, Level 3. Thomas Tutor, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. Grace Fuller, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. Lucia Magliola, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. Tracy Reynolds, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. Morgana Connor Bennett, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. Millie Fairweather, Business Administration, Level 3. Ashley Smith, Business Administration, Level 3. Kurt Stammers, Business Administrator, Level 3. Karen Jingles, Customer Service, Level 3. Zoe Slater, Customer Service, Level 3. Harry Wildish, Public Service Operational Delivery, Level 3. Stacey Oliver, Early Years Educator, Level 3. Ellie Jo Friend, Early Years Educator, Level 2. <laughs> you have a fan club. <laughs> Bethany Cookman, Early Years Practitioner, Level 2. Megan Salter, Early Years Practitioner, Level 2. Claire Shrimpton, Early Years Practitioner, Level 2. Now moving on to our next training provider, Mid Kent College. Sam Barnden, Construction and Built Environment, Level 4. Chris Cocker, Electrical Engineering, Level 4.
Lisa Fox, Accountancy, Level 4. Christine Jackson, Professional Accounting Technician, Level 4. Dominic Down, Construction, Contracting Operations, Level 3. Jake Wheatley, Construction, Contracting Operations, Level 3. Joseph Warner, Engineering and Mechanical Manufacture, Level 3. Georgia Chell, Accounts Finance Assistant, Level 2. Our next provider is North Kent College, Hadlow College, Samuel DeWitt Cheney, Landscape Operative, Level 2. <laughs> Helen Fletcher, Horticulture Operative, Level 2. Amelia Green, Horticulture Operative, Level 2. Christopher Lockyer, Horticulture Operative, Level 2. Joshua Myers, Horticulture Operative, Level 2. Scott Nolan, Horticulture Operative, Level 2. That concludes our third set of graduates. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you very much. You can now return to your seat. Thank you. Now, we have all heard of apprenticeships by now, but the body that works to establish and ensure the workplace relevance and quality of each apprenticeship with input from the employers, awarding organizations and training providers is the Institute of Apprenticeships and Technical Education, or IFATE for short. Now, their remit, as the title implies, is broader than apprenticeships, also encompassing the new T levels, which you may be becoming increasingly aware of as an alternative pathway to A level at level three. Many are in fact now being delivered at our county's further FE colleges. And it gives me great pleasure now to welcome to the stage Dr. Tanya Laws of IFATE to say a few words for you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. That's, that's what we do at IFATE. Um, we're still a relatively new organisation, being just over five years old, but we are very passionate about making sure that every apprenticeship is as relevant as it possibly can be, because we know that's, that makes it so much more valuable, both to employers and to the apprentices themselves. So it's a real honour for me to be here today to share this moment with all of you. Um, and as a long-term resident of Rochester, I love this city and I, I really hope that you all have a chance to take some photographs. We've got some fantastic backdrops, uh, the cathedral, the castle, the river. So, very, you know, make the most of them. So completing an apprenticeship is a huge achievement and you should all be really proud of the work that you've put in to get to where you are today. Whether you're an apprentice or somebody that supported an apprenticeship you have you know you have worked to to develop to, you know, to deliver this 
I've worked on apprenticeships and technical education for most of my career and I've seen a lot of changes over that time. And over the years, apprenticeships have become more challenging and I think they're a better reflection now of the national standards within each of the 600, uh, 650 or so professions that now have apprenticeships. And I think the NHS offer, offers most of those. <laughs> um, being an apprentice and successfully completing an apprenticeship means you've stuck to the program and you've passed the number of assessments. But most importantly, for every single apprentice, their employer has signed them off at the end of the apprenticeship to say that this individual has done a really great job and they are worthy of being recognised as somebody um, who is competent in their particular occupation. Over the last decade or so, apprenticeships have become more accessible and as a result, I think that apprentices are now a much better reflection of our society. We've all heard politicians talking about the importance of upskilling the nation and the relevance of that to growth in our economy. Well, it's absolutely true. Apprentices do really contribute to the skills of our nation. And all the employers that invest in apprentices really contribute to that as well. It's a great way to make sure that we get new and fresh ideas into, into occupations. One of the best parts of my job is going into schools and colleges to tell young people about careers and apprenticeship opportunities. And when young people ask me what's special about apprenticeships, I often describe them as the triple threat in the, uh, in the jobs market. So being an apprentice, you will have three things, and they're things that we describe, and a lot of you will know when I use the acronym KSBs, but for those of you that don't know that acronym, I'm talking about knowledge, the knowledge that it takes to do a job, all that understanding. I'm talking about the skills, so having the chance to practice actually performing all the skills you need to do a job competently. And then lastly, the behaviours, demonstrating that you're the type of person that the sector wants. And behaviours can be things like having the kind of empathy that's needed for a lot of jobs in, in places like NHS, or the attention to detail that people doing things like accountancy really need. Um, or for those that work in outdoors, definitely kind of that, that ability to go out in all weathers and, and to, to do that job. So those behaviours and knowledge and skills are what employers are really looking for. And that's a really powerful thing when you, when you look for promotion or you look for a new job that, that employers can see. So as we applaud these brilliant people, young and old, starting their working lives or moving to a new phase of their careers, let's reflect on all the work that they've put in to get here and celebrate each and every one of them. Thank you. Thank you ever so much, Tanya. And now it's time to announce our final set of graduates this afternoon. And so could Anna Morrison please join me back on stage to hand out the scrolls. We're keeping you busy this afternoon, Anna. <laughs> I'm sure you all know the drill by now. As before, of course, I will read out all of the graduates. If you want to save your applause until the very end, don't forget when you come up onto the stage and receive your scroll, do pause for your photograph. Now, our first training provider in this final set is North Kent College. And first up to the stage, please, Mitchell Atkinson, Installation Electrician and Maintenance Electrician, Level 4. Zach Berry, Motor Vehicle Service and Maintenance Technician, Light Vehicle, Level 3. Annie Banks, Dental Nursing, Level 3. <laughs> Stacey Cornelius, Dental Nursing, Level 3. Katarzyna Kaza, Team Leader, Supervisor, Level 3.
Liam Marsh, Motor Vehicle Service and Maintenance Technician, Light Vehicle, Level 3. <laughs> you now have to make a real statement walking down the nave. <laughs> Holly McGillicuddy, hairdressing level three. Tony Lee Payne, dental nursing level three. Sarah Quattroloni, team leader, supervisor, level three. Alina Voitu, Team Leader Supervisor, Level 3. Josh Adams, Commie Chef, Level 2. <laughs> Maya Brooks Kajona, Engineering Operative, Level 2. Nicole Gardner, Hair Professionals, Level 2. Eva Greenwood, Hair Professionals, Level 2. Molly Hobbs, Hair Professionals, Level 2. Talia Hurley, Hair Professionals, Level 2. Hannah Nelson, Hair Professionals, Level 2. <laughs> Lily Rushbrook, Hair Professionals, Level 2. James Smith, Site Carpentry, Level 2. Our next training provider is Profile Development and Training Limited. Leah Bevel, Business Administrator, Level 3. Sophie Olson, Business Administrator, Level 3. Georgia Shelton, Business Administrator, Level 3. Hayley Burke, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. Samantha Burns, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. Chelsea Dilworth, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. Chloe Horsley, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. John Rose, Teaching Assistant, Level 3. Moving on to runway training. Emily Barks, Business Administrator, Level 3. Kirsten Bennett's Lead Adult Care Worker, Level 3. <laughs> Beth Fleming, Business Administrator, Level 3. Abby Lane, Business Administrator, Level 3.
Lauren Fraser, Accounting, Level 2. Now from Skills Training UK, Terry Coke, Operations Departmental Manager, Level 5. Joanne Davies, Operations Departmental Manager, Level 5. Pauline Harmer, Operations Departmental Manager, Level 5. Sam Wright, Operations Departmental Manager, Level 5. And finally, from the University of Kent, Thomas Beniston, Technical S Technician Scientist, Level 5. <laughs> Lara Devonish, Technician Scientist, Level 5. <laughs> Tyler Harvey Cowlishaw, Technician Scientist, Level 5. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our final set of graduates. Do you congratulate them? So at this point, I sincerely panic that we haven't missed anybody. <laughs> I'm sure we haven't. <laughs> um, Ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely hope that you have all enjoyed this afternoon, apprentices especially, but importantly, friends, family, employers, and training provider staff. Thank you so much for being here at the celebration this afternoon. Do give all of yourselves another round of applause. It's hard to outdo Anna Morrison's amazing apprenticeships, but that's simply what you are, all are. And for all of our 2022 Kent and Medway amazing apprentice graduates, all the very best for your future careers. And thank you for being here this afternoon. Congratulations to you all. Before we conclude events today, I do need to make a couple of announcements for you. A big and deserved thank you to the whole organizing partnership. It takes a huge amount of work to organize today's event. So I'm sure you want to thank them for making today happen. So let's give them a round of applause. Also, thank you to our sponsoring organizations who I mentioned a little bit earlier on. I'd also like to give thanks to the Rochester Cathedral and the entire team here today, Carrie Ryder, Colin Tolhurst, and our superb organist and assistant director of music, Jeremy Lloyd, who played us in at the start of the afternoon. So let's give them a clap as well. Thanks, of course, to our gowning company, Graduation Attire, part of Eves Limited. On that note, all graduates, please can you make sure that you return your gowns? Do not go home <laughs> with your gowns, please. So once the ceremony has concluded, do make sure that they are sent back. Uh, a huge thanks to Mid Kent College and its students that have helped marshalling today as part of their coursework experience, and also to EKC Group for designing the programme. Let's give them a clap as well. Thank you.
Now, photo link information is going to be set to all graduates from Monday. So do look out on your emails. And if it hasn't arrived, do check your spam because there is a chance it might have dropped in there. We won't want you to miss it. Updated edits of the digital program will also be available next week. Finally, I have to remind all that this event is organized around a central objective of making it as free as possible to our apprentices. And we have thanked the 2022 sponsors, but if you're interested in being part of the 2023 event as a sponsor or a supporter we do have a special desk just between the nave and the crypt where you can find out a bit more information so do head there a little bit later on all information will also be at www.appgradknm.org or just google kenta medway apprenticeship graduation and you are bound to find it so please do help us make 2023 even bigger and better. Now, one last task, which is probably the most difficult of the day, is to try and get a group photo of all of our graduates up on the stage here. So um, I don't quite know how we're going to attempt this, Mark, <laughs> but in some kind of orderly fashion, <laughs> if you could please join us on stage, we will try and do a group photo. But for me, thank you ever so much for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. <laughs>